How's it going everyone? I am back after a brief hiatus and I bring to you today a brand new feature on Silvicultural. So back in the spring we released our uh, cruising and inventory system which allows you to enter some cruise data onto your forest polygons to generate some standing inventory estimates and now we actually have an extension to that feature. Now by entering just a few more variables you can project the growth of that stand and that data over the next 50 years and so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to test and demonstrate that feature in this beautiful mixed wood stand in northern Maine on this beautiful fall day. The procedure is going to be much the same as generating the uh, present standing inventory data. We're still going to be taking the same type of cruise points. Um, so I'm not going to cover the procedure and methodology extensively, but you are going to need your angle gauge. And now we actually have a new offer on Silvicultural where for all new members on either the lifetime or annual plan, we're going to send you a free forester's field kit which includes both the angle gauge and a right in the rain uh, field book so you can not only collect data but also take notes and keep that over time which i think is a very important practice for forest landowners i took a poll last month and the vast majority of you did not have this so uh, it's a pretty simple tool but i'm just going to make it easier for you and now you're going to get one for free when you join so uh, take advantage of that we also have a new canopy height layer so you can actually see the heights of trees that's pretty cool but i'll talk about that in the next video uh, for right now, I'm just going to get started and take some points. Like I said, I'm not going to cover the procedure very extensively. I've done that in previous videos. So I'm just going to get started. And the one difference between this data and the previous data is we are going to need to know the age of the forest. So I'm going to talk about that briefly in a minute, but let's just start taking data. So like I said, the only real additional complication uh, for this growth analysis is going to be determining the age of your forest. And that can be a little bit tricky, especially if you're in a multi-age stand. But what we're going to do is we're going to find uh, the mean age for the overstory or for the canopy or dominant and co-dominant size classes if you want to be technical. Now what I'm going to be using today is an increment bore. So I'm actually going to drill into the tree to take a core and I'll be able to count the rings that way. And that's uh, the most accurate and most convenient way to do that but probably not the methodology i'd recommend because this tool alone costs 250 dollars. so unless you are a very serious forest landowner with probably a, a lot of land too it's probably not worth it for the average person to get this but there are other ways you can determine uh, the age via satellite imagery you know especially if it used to be an old farm or something like that you can look through archival uh, satellite images Obviously, you can cut down a couple trees in your property and count the rings that way. Uh, and you only have to get the age once, right? Because then you can just document it and know uh, from that point forward. So it's only really something you have to do once. Uh, but that can be another pretty accurate method of, of getting the age. And then maybe as a last resort, you can lean on just estimating. Uh, I probably wouldn't recommend that, though, because you can be pretty off. And even being off by 10 or 20 years, can make a pretty big difference in how the growth projection tool is going to work because trees operate like trains, as I've said in the past. They're really um, organisms of inertia. So if they're growing very quickly, they're going to continue to grow quickly. If they're growing slowly, they're gonna to continue to grow slowly. And so if you're saying a forest has a lot more volume at a much younger age, uh, it's gonna be reading that as a you know, highly fast growing forest and it's gonna project that out into the future. So you do wanna be fairly accurate with your age result. But anyway, I'm gonna be using an increment borer and I'm gonna drill into this tree and count the rings and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, and I personally will be doing this for every plot and then uh, just getting the average from there. But your specific methodology is going to, you know, ultimately depend on what's available to you. So without further ado. All right, so that's what it looks like. So you can just pull out a core and count the ring. So it's pretty easy. So 
So I'm gonna count those and let's see what we have. So I counted 42 rings, but importantly, the last five years of growth have been extremely vigorous. Uh, now I do think the, the trees in this particular area are a bit younger. I have this delineated into several stands, of course, and um, uh, I, th I think the stand delineation is especially important when you're doing the growth analysis. Uh, the more you can isolate forest community types, I think the more accurate results you're going to get. Uh, but in any case, the trees here are both fairly young and fairly vigorous, so I'm sure I'm going to get some pretty good numbers in terms of growth. Elsewhere, it might be very different. I might have some trees close to mortality, very thin rings, uh, and they might be, you know, 80, 100 years old, and they're just not going to be growing as fast. So um, if you can ascertain the age of the trees, you're going to be able to, you know, get the data that's most suitable to your forest. And now we're back at the computer, and all we have to do is upload those data points that we collected. And uh, this is actually just state land that uh, I'm using for testing purposes. And I created two stands out of an old harvest. So we have this one on the left and this one on the right. And also uh, what I have up here right now is the new canopy height layer. So you can actually see the estimated height of the canopy. And then under it, I have the color infrared. So you're getting basically two dimensions of the forest. You have the infrared reflection beneath uh, the canopy height. And that gives us uh, a really great ability to see the forest just from our computer screen. So uh, I'm really happy about that. And I'm going to be doing more videos about these layers specifically, but uh, for now, let's just focus on the new growth tool. So again, this is just an extension of the inventory tool. So we're going to go to the inventory program like we have in the past, and we're going to add the uh, plots that we collected and the data from those plots. So I'm going to do that real quick. All right, so we have all the plots added. So now we just hit confirm and we have our inventory data generated. And I always like to work in Quartz per acre. So uh, it's a fairly low volume stand. Of course, this was also harvested probably about 10 years ago. So that's to be expected. We have 10 Quartz per acre of standing inventory. Now, what is surprising to me is the vast majority was balsam fir. Um, and that's something that you wouldn't exactly see from uh, the uh, imagery. So we can actually turn off the canopy for a second and look at the color infrared. And we have some pretty large crowns and some of the standing hardwood, and that kind of obfuscates, or obscures rather, uh, the majority of balsam fir in there. So that's what we have for standing inventory. So now let's take a look at the growth, the whole purpose of this. So we hit this growth projection tool, and we have three variables that we have to input here. The first one is the stand age, and this would be uh, the mean age of the canopy. So what I got for a number was 46 years old, and uh, it was actually fairly consistent. It was a multi-age stand, so I was worried that was gonna be a bit of a problem. But as I drilled into the trees and counted their rings, um, there was a pretty big difference in size, but the ages tended to be fairly consistent. So it was, uh, I'd say 46 years, plus or minus 10 years. Um, and that's, you know, that's a pretty good spread. Next, we have silviculture, and at least for right now, we just have two uh, very basic categories here. We have natural, which is basically just free to grow, and then managed. And the difference here, what we're actually counting is the net growth. So that's growth minus mortality. And if you're managing the silviculture, the assumption is that there's going to be lower mortality because you're capturing and harvesting that mortality. If you just have a natural forest, you're going to have a higher level of mortality, which is going to drag down your net growth. So you can choose uh, accordingly. In this particular instance, I am going to choose natural uh, because even though it has been harvested in the past, there is still a fair amount of mortality, probably just owing to the species composition. So I think it's fair to use the natural designation. And then for site quality, it's just a perfectly average site. Um, obviously, we have a uh, low and high. A high quality site is a really high quality site. A low quality site, it's a really low quality site. I think the majority of the time, it's best just to use medium, uh, but you can determine that for yourself. Then we hit calculate. And what we can see here is over the next 50 years from age 46, we go from, uh, oh, quartz per acre. We go from 12 quarts per acre for the, uh, that starts five years from today. And then we end at 27.4 quarts per acre. Now that checks out and matches really what I would expect because one thing I noticed as I was um, using my increment borer and looking at the growth rings, 
the trees in the canopy, they're still growing remarkably well. I mean, we're talking about every five years, they're putting on probably an inch in uh, diameter. So there's still a tremendous amount of productivity in this stand. Now there is a lot of mortality, mostly from competition, a lot of balsam fir dying, uh, but nonetheless, the net growth of this stand is going to be tremendous. And if this were left to grow for another 50 years, I would expect somewhere around, you know, 27 quarts per acre to be the standing inventory. The only potential criticism I might have of this is the extent to which uh, the composition remains balsam fir. Balsam fir does tend to die off pretty quickly after age 70. So if we look at the uh, growth rate, if we look at FIA data, so official US Forest Service FIA data for balsam fir, um, for a pure stand of balsam fir, we do see that the standing volume tends to diminish, at least for an even age stand, after age 70. It doesn't tend to live very long. Um, so it's possible that over time, after a certain age, we would start to see some of these other species start to take over the composition. However, there was a lot of young balsam fir in that stand also. So I think in this case, uh, this would still be perfectly reasonable to expect um, a essentially constant composition of balsam fir into the future. But that's something I'll continue to test is just looking at the mortality assumptions of various species and seeing if that needs to be adjusted. But I think this holds. So this stand is a bit more diverse in terms of its total composition. Um, one very interesting thing about this stand, which I think is important to note, is if we look at the canopy layer here, I'll click off there, we can actually see that uh, this stand was quite a bit taller than the other on average. However, in this particular case, that did not result in a substantial um, addition of inventory, and there's one very good reason for that. The trees were very skinny. They were tall and skinny. Um, so the basal area ended up being about the same. This one we had, what was it, 70, 72 square feet of basal area. And this one we had uh, 69.99, so 70. So it was about the same. And also remember when we're measuring heights, we're measuring the merchantable volume, the amount of the tree we can actually use. And with skinnier trees, uh, that tends to be, that could be halfway up the tree. Whereas with a wider diameter tree, you might go two thirds, three quarters, something like that. Um, so even though on the canopy, the trees are taller, the merchantable height is pretty similar. And that's what my data showed. So let's look at what we're gonna get for growth here. Uh, the age was about the same. We got 43 for a mean stand age. We'll keep natural silviculture, medium site quality. And with cords per acre, we have substantially more volume um, at the end of the 50 year period. And that's owing likely to the lack of balsam fir. So you have a lot less mortality. And if we look, the growth is gonna be fairly well balanced across uh, most of the species. So how accurate is this? Uh, well, you know, in the woods, when it comes to uh, both inventory and growth projection, and everything else, nothing is exactly accurate. It's just a question of uh, how useful the framework is. And I think, especially for a small forest landowner, this is incredibly useful and incredibly powerful. That said, this is inherently still um, a limited analysis. And anytime you're doing inventory or growth work in the forest, it's always gonna be limited. Of course, there's the famous phrase, um, well, all models are wrong, some are useful. Now for the small forest landowner, I think this is an incredibly practical and useful framework, especially considering the counterfactual there really was no access uh, to get this information previously without paying for a very expensive cruise. And even then, um, you know, cruise data can be very subject to error and growth models can be wildly inaccurate. And of course, I'm never a fan in any situation of uh, using what would be called a volume control framework for managing your forest. I don't believe you should be harvesting your land based on the volume you're growing. I think you should be using an area control framework and that's what I promote. Um, nonetheless, I, I think it is important to visualize what your forest uh, looks like over time, how your forest is going to grow. We live in a dopaminergic era. We live in the era of the Zillow's estimate. And when you're a forest landowner and you're just looking at trees and you could look at them for five years, 10 years, and it doesn't really look like they're growing, you know, that's when you start thinking, well, they're not doing anything. Maybe I should just harvest them now. Maybe, um, 
maybe they're not doing anything for me and uh, this is a stupid investment, whatever you're thinking. It's important to look beyond that and, and see what these trees are doing over time. So I'm gonna continue to test this and tweak it. Um, I think I'll probably have to do a little bit of tweaking on the mortality assumptions of some of the shorter lived species. Uh, I'll, I'll look into that a little more. But overall, I'm extremely happy with this and um, I'm, I'm just super excited to bring it to you guys. And uh, same with the inventory program, I've been using that pretty extensively and uh, I'm very pleased with, with how it's working. So, you know, Silvicultural has been around for about a year now and when I first launched, it was essentially uh, just a, a mapping program with basic satellite imagery. And now it has a whole built-in inventory and growth program. It has all these different data layers. So it's, it's really exciting for me. And, I'm, I'm, and I really wanna thank you guys because every dollar that I've gotten for Silvicultural has gone right back into it in producing some of these newer programs. Um, and I would not have been able to do that without you guys. So thank you so much. And um, you know, I, I really wanna be able to pay you back by bringing you the best possible um, you know, forest management software with the best possible framework suitable for small landowners. That's what I'm trying to do here. And uh, we're well on our way, I think. So I still have more systems and programs I wanna build, of course, but you know, this is, this is the best software out there for small landowners. Like if you, if you wanna manage your forest, grab Silvicultural. And of course, right now, uh, we are providing the right in the rain notebooks and the angle gauges. So you get everything you need in order to use these systems to their fullest. So that's all for now, guys. Uh, I have a lot more content coming soon. Um, so you can stay tuned for that. Um, it's, it's been a little bit since my last video, but I've been busy with various things and um, at least for the time being, I'm going to focus on doing more video production. So stay tuned. In any case, I'll catch you later.